I'm Ian Vanderwald. I'm a commercial photographer based in Melbourne, and I've been shooting commercially for almost 40 years. So we're going to use a mixture of lighting today, from hard lighting to create strong, sharp shadows, through to soft lighting to give us nice, clean, evenly lit uh, product shots. So we're going to play around a little bit, experiment a little bit, to see if we can come up with some looks that will uh, help Liz sell her products. Then we'll do some more lifestyle type images where we add some shadows and some, some techniques to make it a little more creative. But basically we'll start with basic product photography and then add a couple of little effects in there to spice it up a little bit. And then lastly, we're going to do a 360 degree GIF file where a viewer can view the product online and by scrolling the mouse over the image, the image will actually rotate to create some animation or some movement on what otherwise would be a static website. We're going to use a system by Manfrotto called Syrup. And what it does is it automates the process. So once we've focused the camera, we've decided how many images we want to take in a rotation. Through an iPhone app, I click Start and the Syrup system does the rest. My name's Liz and I've recently started my own skincare business as well. So Base is a range of skincare products. We're a natural skincare brand, we're vegan, we're made in Australia, and we're fragrance free. I've never really done any photography before I started the brand, and so I've been shooting off my iPhone and then trying to work with just editing from the iPhone. We were down on the beach shooting one of the products next to the water on the shoreline using the waves as they came in. We were working with natural sunlight and Ian was showing me the difference between using full-on sun and how that looks with the shadow, creating a hard shadow, and then also using a couple of products to dapple the light and to um, block the product from direct sunlight and how that affects the photographs. This morning we started shooting in JPEGs and I was very easily able to illustrate to Liz how it does not give us the flexibility to actually really control the tonal range within that file and we lose a lot of information. So we teach a raw workflow in these workshops where we teach people to get the best out of their camera so that they can actually really nail the tonality and not have blown highlights or blocked up shadows but can really bring everything into line within the file to produce the best result. When we're photographing in a natural environment, we're really at the beck and call of the elements. And what we did was introduced a couple of small little light modifiers that took that, I suppose, risk of the weather away or the lighting away and gave us a lot more control. So we, we did a shot initially just in direct sunlight. We then took another shot where we added a scrim just to soften the light. That then made the lighting a little bit too flat. And then we added some contrast by adding a little bit of flash into the shot. The beauty of that is you can go out and shoot and emulate those sorts of results irrespective of what the weather's like. So on a flat overcast day, we can increase contrast. On a harsh, contrasty, sunny day, we can reduce contrast. And when you know those basic little techniques, you can actually start to get consistency in your images. We just used a Profoto A10, which is a, an on-camera flash but it's designed unlike a speed light that projects light forward to illuminate a scene. It gives a much softer, broader spread of light, more like a studio light. So we use that purely just to, in one instance, to increase the contrast by giving us a specular highlight in the product that was missing when we introduced the scrim. So what we used today was a Canon R10, which is an intermediate, it's above entry level, but it's something that gives you good quality and it gives you instant feedback through the viewfinder as to what you're getting. We used a scrim today and a flash, but you could equally use a little piece of polystyrene or a white bit of A4 card uh, as a reflector to bounce light. So that then it's in itself becomes a light source. Today we're gonna to use props that you could pretty much find around the house. So we've been to Officeworks and got some paper, but we've also been to Liz's house and just picked up some items that were lying around the house, like, like a large salad bowl, some, some sample tiles that, that she had, and some other bits and pieces that we will try and incorporate into the images. I use pretty much exclusively Profoto lighting. What I'm going to use today is their A2 series, which is their smallest and cheapest lighting setup. Um, it's also extremely portable. So I've flown up from Melbourne, I was able to easily carry it on the plane with me. Uh, we're gonna set up a little setup and we're gonna start with just one light, okay? So if you're looking at starting out, you don't have a lot of money to spend on a huge lighting setup, We'll start with one light. The beauty with Profoto is it's a complete system that you can just keep adding to as you get better 
and your requirements change. But we'll start off with a one light setup and then we'll go across to it. We'll, we'll do some multi-light setups and have a bit of a play. Well, that, what we're gonna use is a little Octobox, all right? It's also gonna soften the shadows a little bit. So what we have is what we call a soft box, right? This thing here, but this is a quick one. It's very, very quick to put together. And if you would like to pass me that flash in it, it's all magnetic. So there's a magnet around here. Oh, uh, okay. And so that actually acts as the background as well. It's gonna be a pure white background, mm, all right? Okay. What we like is to have something that's got a bit of a sheen to it in the foreground because then it reflects the background and it goes white all the way through. Is we've just used a hard light, gives hard shadows. Soft light gives soft shadows. But again, you'll notice I'm, I'm lighting from the side. If you notice that I've never lit anything from the front because that's what accentuates shape and form. If I light from the front, it's just gonna flatten it out. I'm actually gonna go, and I'm gonna use a light meter this time and take a light reading to get my exposure right. So if yeah. you wanted to photograph your own products and you have one flash in a soft box like that, you mm -hmm. can set something like this up in a spare room and then all you've got to do is go boom, boom, and you get a result like that. So what will happen, it's the movement in the water that's going to give us the effect, right? Yeah. So if you get your hair dryer, and I want you to just gently try and create some rippling in the, in the water. Mm -hmm. Once we've done that, I'm going to add a coloured gel to this to give you a different effect. So it, experimenting, so you get your lighting, you get everything right, but you experiment. So maybe it will go rougher, but just come up a bit higher. Okay. And then I'm going to add some colour into that background light, so we might get some coloured accents in there just to, to lift yep. it. This stuff is trial and error, so you don't just take one. So this is great, look at the splashes here. Yeah. You know, that there. We have the ability to really nail the white balance. And we do that uh, by using a Calibrite colour checker chart. This colour checker chart enables us to actually accurately measure or set the white balance for the lights that we're using. So that's the first step. That means that all the colours under that light source are going to appear natural and true to life in terms of colour. Not all monitors are, are equal and uh, many monitors aren't able to display the colour that we can capture with modern day cameras and video recorders. So if you're viewing them on a monitor that isn't calibrated to industry standards, then it doesn't matter what you do at the camera level because you can't assess it. So we're going to use a BenQ monitor today. BenQ have a range of monitors designed specifically for designers, for videographers and for photographers that have been meticulously created to be able to reproduce the colour space that we work in. So what that means in layman's terms is that if we can capture a certain colour accurately with our camera, the BenQ monitor can accurately reproduce it. So we're seeing it as it should be seen and we will calibrate that monitor with a Calibrate uh, I1 display, which is essentially a device that measures the colour uh, coming out of the monitor and creates an ICC profile or a little tweak to correct the colour that we're viewing to make sure that what we're seeing is accurate. Editing for websites and editing for socials quite often are very, very different. What I'm finding with socials is it's more like what we shot this morning down on the beach where it's environmental, what we call alfresco, you know, out in the real world. Where for e-commerce, it tends to be a little bit more controlled, where we take it into that studio environment and we focus on capturing that product flawlessly so that that product looks a million dollars. I think before today, it almost felt overwhelming for me because I knew there was so much to learn and I'm not a professional. Having Ian really talk me through everything, I realised how doable it is to create that mini studio at home, utilising things that you have at home and like surfaces and props that you might have at home and also how just simple lighting techniques can really elevate the photography. Today has empowered me to become more of a photographer, definitely. I feel a lot more confident going out and shooting my product and also creating a space at home that I can shoot my product regularly. So yeah, I took a lot away from it and I feel a lot more confident with that. When you're coming on and you've never done any professional photography before, there's so much to learn from even what I've learned about the lighting, but also the equipment that you use and even the lingo and the, the technical words and everything that you use. So there's a lot to learn there. But I think that the way that Ian explained it, it was really easy for me to understand and I took away a lot from that and I'd be really interested in learning more from someone who's worked in that field for a long time. Well, Georgia's are really committed to educating their, uh, their buying public. So they run on a monthly basis workshops in all aspects of photography and video. So if you'd like to learn more about e-commerce, 
uh, go to the George's website or to the Eventbrite website and look up George's Cameras Sydney and there's a whole range of workshops where you can learn techniques like getting the best for your e-commerce images.